All righty, folks. By now, you have probably heard that I fear I am predicting, I'm guessing, my crystal ball, whatever you want to call it. We are going to have a sideways housing market for at least three years, probably five years. And it ain't out of question eight to 10 years. So I think what has happened over the last two years is we've got a decade worth of appreciation in two years. And now it's time to pay the piper. So we're going to go three to eight years of a sideways market. Some people hear me say that and they go, great, I'll invest somewhere else. Others go, great, time to go shopping. Matt, the lumberjack, I know you what you're thinking, but let's let's highlight what a let's just pretend I'm right for a minute. And sure. the median home price is up two or three percent by twenty twenty eight. So basically sideways. Yep. Does that market scare you? Are you excited? Yep. What what yep. uh what if anything? Um it <laughs> It, it means if it's doing that, if it's going sideways, then likely we have inventory again, right? Okay. So we likely have inventory again. And if we have inventory again, then it just comes down to, am I a better operator than the other investors in my area and finding the pocket? You know, we don't buy every deal that comes across our desk. We no. buy, right? Like I'm, yeah. I, I probably, I haven't done a deal. The one that we're going to close on this week I think is only my third deal this year, second or third deal this year. And it's September. Yeah. All that means is I didn't find, I didn't find deals. I didn't find assets that I wanted to acquire. And so I think that that's the, that's the mistake people make is a steady market is actually really the most fun market. I don't want the X, the, it it gets rid of all the pretenders. It gets rid of all the short timers. It get it really turns it into Somebody says, eh, you know, kind of two, three years into that, they're just like, oh, market's kind of just flat, boring, dead. You know, stuff isn't selling in 14 days anymore. It's taking two months on the market. That means that you have that much bigger of an opportunity to create a deal. Create, yeah. right? I'm glad you went there because the first thing I think about a five year, let's just assume five years. So 2028. Yeah. I now call them financial engineers. Sure. The pretenders. Yep, They're all gone. There are yeah. so many people that got into this because of easy money, easy profit. And they may have talked cash flow, but let's be clear. They were betting on appreciation. Of course. Right. I'm going to come in, buy this value add, add this, add that. I'm going to sell it, make a gazillion dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's all gone. So I am ecstatic. Yeah, seriously ecstatic that the pretenders will be gone, burned out, ne likely never return. Mm -hmm. And it's just the operators. Because for a couple of years, probably three years, people made fun of me, right? Because I sold a couple of apartments in 19 because I thought they were richly valued and was wrong, uh, given what happened after. Sure. But um, all of those people that overpaid with bridge debt did that. All those people that are trying to do Airbnb arbitrage and other areas. I'm there's so many pretenders who yeah. think real estate investing is easy Yep. that, uh, yeah, there's going to be a comeuppance. And it happened before. I mean, that was one of the things that happened in 06, right? Is a lot of the people that lost homes were investors who had multiple homes, right? Yep. They were doing these stupid two-year teaser loans and busting out when they were rinsed in cover. So uh, we're going to see it, uh, obviously, a bunch of commercial. Uh, we'll see it some in residential. But yeah, that's the big thing for me. And then you're right. Inventory, I think, slowly builds, right? Where, I don't know, depending on who you talk yeah. to, between four and 600 days on market, going to explode higher. Yeah. But dude, that's when I go shopping. Hell yeah. Exactly. It's like, where's that motivated seller, right? If you go to a party, like a New Year's Eve, like you go to New York, New York for New Year's Eve party, right? I've never done it, but when you look on TV, there's a gazillion people. You know what? There's five motivated sellers in there. Good right. luck finding them. That's right. Sure. You know what? You go to an Oakland A's game when there's nobody in the stands, there's five motivated sellers. I like your chances of finding five motivated sellers at an Oakland A's home game that's got like 800 people in the stands versus finding those five people in a you know New Year's celebration in New York. I mean, that's the best analogy I have. They're always motivated sellers. It's going to be yeah. easier to find them in a slow market. I just, you know, I like, I like slow markets because it allows you to create the opportunity. 
Mm-hmm. They don't have 17 people knocking at the door ready to bang it down and pay an overpay based on the fact that they have FOMO. Yeah, we we I mean we did deals when speed was the answer. Yeah. I didn't like it. Hated it wasn't it. I yeah, nope, I could get it, it done, but it was like this is nuts. This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's really going to come down to being able to create that opportunity and the seller recognizing that they might have missed it because rates went up. I still believe we're going to see that median home price come down. What's really funny is, Mike, I looked at median home price in my market. There are three houses on the market, median minus. Dude, median is not coming down. That's three. easy math right there. It could. Well, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I'm like looking at this. I was like. My hypothesis might be completely counterintuitive. And so (laughs) possibly I'm wrong, right? And so in looking at it, it's, but the funny thing is, is the upper stuff isn't moving either. It's still the median minus stuff that when it hits the market, it actually sells. No, yeah. That's why the key is, yeah, the key is only three of them. But if you only have four above the median sell, and even if they say, that's what people, that's what blows people away. So my model, my prediction the whole time, Yep. You know this because we we're on the opposite sides of this. Absolutely. This the the luxury stuff. Yeah. It's gonna crack first because that's gonna stack, stack, stack. And then you're gonna see people take 200 k haircuts because they're still done. Above they're median. Yep. But it's still above the median. Absolutely. Right. Yep. As Absolutely. the low stuff just, you know, it's like, you know, teeth on a, you know, a rooster or something. They just don't exist. Yeah. So um, well, that's that's where I'm looking for some of the bigger players. Yeah. that are going to be producing some of these like specials, right? Like these yeah. two twos. Mm-hmm. That's how I win. <laughs> yeah. I'm finding, I'm finding my path to victory. How do I get there? Because yeah. that's what we're looking at. We're looking at these really expensive assets. And again, you know, it was really funny. So we had talked about it, but everyone knows that's been watching the channel for any amount of time whatsoever. I've been looking for a Lamborghini yep. and they've come down in price. An right? orange Lamborghini. Let's be an clear. orange Lamborghini. Yes. Yes. Otherwise I have to have it wrapped. I'll buy a yellow one, but I hate yellow. So I would wrap it and it would cost me three grand. But the thing that people really need to understand is the upper echelon has not really felt the pain yet at all. Not yet. And so I've seen some discounts, but you know, who's feeling the pain? Every, the normal Joe they're, they're getting crushed because they've got these massive car payments and they don't have any more stimmy dollars coming in. And some of them are losing jobs. Yeah. It's gonna, you, you know what, what market cracked first? Which remember, one? I remember, I, I remember meet Kevin doing this walkthrough of a Rolex store like three years ago or two years ago. Yeah. Watches. Yeah. Watches. That's cracked. No right? shit. All those people balled out on, you know, five, $6,000 watches. Oh Mike, shit. Mike, I need cash for rent. Mike, I'm a watch guy. Yeah. Like 30 and 40 and $50,000 watches stuff that Ooh. you used to be able, you could walk into an AD, uh, um, an authorized dealer of Rolex. You could, you couldn't get a watch right away. Yeah. They would be like, we'll have to put you on the list, but then you would get the call. It was a $12,000 watch that you could then literally flip for 20. Wow. And that market went insane. I love the watch stuff. I watch a, that's probably the thing I watch the second most content on is watch stuff because I love okay. watches. Wow. Okay. And that market, you nailed it. That market is, is not, it's down a lot. It's not down to where it should be, but all it really was is a correction. It's the yeah. same thing that, you know, people are expecting in houses. The difference is even though some watches cost as much as a house, no one's ever lived in one. Yeah, so. exactly. That's, that becomes something easy to, easy to get rid of. Right. Well, Richard, um, Richard Millet is one and his watches in the, in the pandemic, they were trading. And just after they were trading for anywhere from 350 to $500,000, his watch. Geez, wow. And those watches that sold for five, five fifty, six hundred, a lot of them have come back down to three fifty, Oosh. or three. And that I think we can both agree is a luxury buyer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not taking a loan to buy that. I'm but sure. they're selling but they're selling their watches first, right? And yeah, then of course. it will be and then it will be their house. It'll be their cars. It'll be the, it'll be watch, cars. watch, boats, cars. Yep. Cars. Watch boats, second, cars, then house. Second, second homes. Yep. Nailed it. Second homes. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, It'll they're not an, gonna be dumping their main homes, I don't think. No. No, why would they? They probably yeah. have two and a half or three percent debt on the main. But they home. probably got a one. I mean, that's they what could. that's wild about this. A lot of folks were going to um what was that bank in California that uh, 
Republic, SVB. No, First Republic Bank, the one that JP okay. Morgan bought. Gotcha. They, I, people yeah, don't know one. this, but the what First Republic Bank had a had a special mortgage arm for I'll call it the rich. They were doing 30 year jumbo loans at one nine. Shut up. Because they wanted their deposits. Yeah. Well, that's because that's it's fractional lending. So every dollar for those people that don't know, when a bank takes in a dollar in deposit, they can they lend it out nine. 10 times or nine, nine times. But yeah. Nine, nine times. times. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's um yeah. So that was a big thing. So again, if you're if you're a jumbo, you know, California guy with Napa guy, you got a one nine, dude, you're not selling that. No, well, you're, dude, inflation's at three and a half percent. And you're like, no, yeah. free money. Thank you. They literally have a team of people in the bank calling you every three days to see if you want to pull your money out of your house. Yeah, exactly. You want that? You want that? You want that? So, yeah. At the end of the day, I think a broken housing market is what we're going to get. Yep. Uh, you may not like it. I think it's wonderful. It um, is wonderful. Because, again, motivated sellers. Also, let's be clear. Creative financing is going to like this is. Like if you could go back and get that first book from Robert G. Allen, it, like nothing down for the eighties, it's been out of print for 30 years, maybe 40 years. Um, That's the time. This is 1981, 82, 83 again. Yeah. And um, I'm excited for what's coming. I have a lot to learn, right? I'm not done learning. I got more tools to put in my tool belt, but I'm excited for the next three to five years and, and quite possibly eight years. So it's going to be fun. I mean, you probably can grow as big as you are all over again in the next three years. If you yeah. wanted to if get, I had that, to if I had that, to 400, yeah. right. But if that's the, to. but that's the place that we all get to, right. What's enough. What's, What's enough? enough. What's enough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, 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 you know, again, I, I, I think financial, I think, you know, a better financial future, you're climbing up a mountain. Yeah. At some point, at least in my experience, you get to a clearing where you like the view and you're comfortable. So you sure. sit your ass down. Yep. Some people climb this mountain and they always want to go higher. I don't sure. get that. Life is short. Yeah. I don't need the extra. St- I mean, I don't, I, I mean, you, I don't begrudge it, but I don't get it. I think it's usually, I think part of its age, right? It's part of its age. Um, I think it's also then other life priorities. I'm a, I'm an old young dad. I'm an old dad right. of young kids. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, could I grow to 500 units? Yeah, of course I could. It's math. Of course I yeah. could. Not interested. Like I'd rather give all of that time to my kids and just manage what we have. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know. Well, at the end of the day, we're going to get a broken housing market. Will it be one, three, five, eight years? We're going to find out oh. together. We will be coming back each and every day, each and every week to tell you what's going on. Where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and on Instagram. My live streams are 11 a.m. Sunday. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, pal.